Okay. Hello and welcome everyone to NEMO's webinar using the Sustainable Development Goals in Museums. It will be facilitated today by Henry McGee from Curating Tomorrow. Once the webinar session starts, Henry will introduce himself to all of you who don't know him until now. This webinar will explore the background of the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, and what they aim to achieve, why all museums should connect with them now. Henry McGee has recently written a guide for museums on how to get started with the SDGs, how they are applicable to all sectors and all countries. So this webinar should be of relevance to museum workers anywhere and in museums of any kind. We are from NEMO, the network of European museum organizations, representing European museums towards policymakers on both national and EU level. Moreover, NEMO provides a platform to share knowledge and train museum professionals in Europe through our training courses, learning exchanges and webinars. Please feel free to ask questions in the QA round at the end of the webinar with the chat function and Henry will be happy to answer them. I now hand over to Henry McGee and wish you all a fruitful webinar session. Okay. Thank you for the introduction and uh, welcome everyone to this webinar. Um, so my name is Henry McGee. My background is as a zoologist and an ecologist um, and I worked in museums for a long time and I uh, became increasingly interested in sustainability and the absolutely huge potential that museums have to help create a more sustainable and better future. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, so. Uh, on the first slide here, you can see these, um, the kind of tiles, the icons of the Sustainable Development Goals, which you may have come across. Um, the circular logo called the SDG wheel, which is, as I say, the logo for the SDGs. And on the right hand side is the cover of the guide that I produced in, in August. Uh, and I'm going to use this guide as a kind of framework for this discussion. So I'll talk for about um, 45 minutes and then we'll have some time for questions afterwards. Um, so there is quite a lot of content in these slides and I've done that deliberately so that you can go back to them at any time because the main aim is that you get something useful from this, from this talk and from this, from this webinar. And so we'll go through this in three sections. Um, some background to the Sustainable Development Goals. I might sometimes refer to them as the SDGs for short. Uh, secondly, to talk about how they're relevant to, the, to museums, but also how museums are relevant to them. And thirdly, how to build the SDGs into all areas of museum activity to help support their achievement. So this webinar should be useful for um, anyone in a museum anywhere or someone working with museums or interested in working with museums. Um, you could be in any role and you could be anywhere. That's one of the beauties of the SDGs is that they apply everywhere. So firstly, let's explore the, the background to the Sustainable Development Goals. And the little um, tiles that you can see above, they're the, the icons for the, for the 17 goals, but I'll, I'll come to talk about them. So, so if we're gonna talk about sustainability and sustainable development, what are they? Um, one of the things is there is no single definition and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, but one of the most common ones is a definition that came from the Brundtland Commission in 1987, that sustainable development is development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. And we can think of sustainability as a kind of state of balance where people and nature flourish together in harmony Sustainability doesn't mean things staying the same because, of course, things change, but it's certainly about ensuring that they don't get worse. So it's about thinking about the considerations of society, the environment and the economy together. And these are sometimes referred to as the three dimensions of sustainability or the three pillars of sustainability. But we can think about sustainability as some kind of hopeful destination in the future and sustainable development is focused activity that helps us to, to reach that destination to and actually to create that destination and so the shorthand I have for it I like to use for it is that sustainable development is about aiming to do more good and to do less harm 
And so the the really big initiative that there was in the past for working towards a sustainable future was the Millennium Development Goals, which ran from 2000 to 2015. And they aimed to reduce poverty and inequality and improve health outcomes um, for the poorest and most needy in society. But it has to be said they were focused on the global south and that doesn't acknowledge that there is inequality and poverty everywhere. Um, and it, some progress was made with them, but not enough. Um, they didn't have enough profile. And also there was a realization that we have one world, everything is connected. So we need to look at the whole picture. And so the Millennium Development Goals were replaced in 2015 with um, the Sustainable Development Goals. And some of you may be familiar with the, the image on the right hand side, the 17 uh, icons that there are for the goals. But it has to be said, far fewer people are familiar with the document on the left hand side, Transforming Our World. Um, and if you are going to be using the Sustainable Development Goals, I very strongly encourage you to please read um, at least the introduction to Transforming Our World. It, it is the context, it is the vision, it is the purpose, and that's what we're going to explore in this webinar. Because the sustainable development goals are not an end in themselves, they are a means to an end. They are the, the roadmap for achieving uh, Transforming Our World, the 2030 Agenda. And so in uh, Transforming Our World, um, it describes our world today and it sets a vision. And I'm actually, I'm just going to read these out because they're so, so important. So um, th that's why there's quite a lot of text in these next few slides. So, so billions of our citizens continue to live in poverty and are denied a life of dignity. There are rising inequalities within and among countries. There are enormous disparities of opportunity, wealth and power. Gender inequality remains a key challenge. Unemployment, particularly youth unemployment, is a major concern. Global health threats, more frequent and intense natural disasters, spiraling conflict, violent extremism, terrorism and related humanitarian crises and forced displacement of people threaten to reverse much of the development progress made in recent decades. Natural resource depletion and adverse impacts of environmental degradation including desertification, production of deserts, drought, land degradation, freshwater scarcity and loss of biodiversity add to and exacerbate the list of challenges which humanity faces. Climate change is one of the greatest challenges of our time and its adverse impacts undermine the ability of all countries to achieve sustainable development. Increases in global temperature, sea level rise, ocean acidification and other climate change impacts are seriously affecting coastal areas and low-lying coastal countries, including many least developed countries and small island developing states. The survival of many societies and of the biological support systems of the planet is at risk. And whether um, you experience all of these um, problems where you are um, or not, you will be experiencing some of them in some form. So in Transforming Our World, it acknowledges building on the um, progress with the Millennium Development Goals uh, that a new approach is needed. Sustainable development recognizes that eradicating poverty in all its forms and dimensions, combating inequality within and among countries, preserving the planet, creating sustained, inclusive and sustainable economic growth and fostering social inclusion are linked to each other and are interdependent. So you can't deal with one challenge without ensuring that your solutions are not building challenges, problems for you're not just creating problems elsewhere. And so the uh, Agenda 2030 is based on this principle of called the five P's, um, which is about considering people, planet and prosperity and peace and partnership. So people, planet and prosperity are the very traditional three dimensions of sustainability of society, environment and economy. But really the beauty of this is it acknowledges that peace and partnership are, are, are the means that we, we kind of push these things together, excuse me. <coughs> they push these things together and that's how we will create a more sustainable future. 
So the vision of, of the SDGs and Agenda 2030 is, that a, is a supremely ambitious and transformational, envisaging a world free of hunger, uh, poverty, hunger, disease and want, and where all life can thrive. A world free of violence, uh, fear and violence, and with universal literacy. A world with equitable and universal access to quality education at all levels, to healthcare and social protection, where physical, mental, and social well-being are assured. Excuse me. A world where we reaffirm our commitments regarding the human right to safe drinking water and sanitation, and where there is improved hygiene, where food is sufficient, safe, affordable, and nutritious. A world where human habitats are safe, resilient, and sustainable, and where there is universal access to affordable, reliable, and sustainable energy. And this, this continues for a couple of slides. So envisaging a world of universal respect for human rights and human dignity, the rule of law, justice, equality, and non-discrimination, respect for race, ethnicity, and cultural diversity, and of equal opportunity, permitting the full realization of human potential and contributing to shared prosperity. So a world which invests in its children and in which every child grows up free of violence and explo exploitation, a world in which every woman and girl enjoys full gender equality and all legal, social and economic barriers to their empowerment have been removed. A just, equitable, tolerant, open and socially inclusive world in which the needs of the most vulnerable are met. We envisage a world in which every country enjoys sustained, inclusive and sustainable economic growth and decent work for all. A world in which consumption and production patterns and use of all natural resources from air to land, from rivers, lakes and aquifers to oceans and seas are sustainable. One in which democracy, good governance and the rule of law, as well as an enabling environment at the national and international levels are essential for sustainable development, including sustained and inclusive economic growth, social development, environmental protection and the eradication of poverty and hunger. One in which development and the application of technology are climate sensitive, respect biodiversity and are resilient and one in which humanity lives in harmony with nature and in which wildlife and other living species are protected. So I don't know about you, but that sounds completely fantastic to me. And that is the world I would like to, to be living in and, and to help to create. So the principles of the 2030 Agenda and the SDGs are about protecting and enhancing human and environmental rights. It's important to say that they're, they're about helping advance international agreements and conventions. They're not a replacement. Uh, they reduce inequality within and between countries and they're aimed at eradicating poverty in all its forms. They use the principle of sustainable, of considering all dimensions together. They have this very important consideration of leave no one behind. And I, li I like to think also that uh, we can think about that as ensuring that we leave no sector behind uh, and they're universal um, they apply everywhere and they apply to everyone and that means they apply to me and they apply to you apply to all of us so as i say you may be familiar with these um, sustainable development goals typically shown as this um, nice picture with the 17 uh, icons um, but I would say you need to, it's, I'd strongly recommend you dig a little bit deeper rather than just um, using the icons. Yeah, I'll give you an example. Um, so let's take um, zero hunger, which is goal two. You might think, oh, well, that's not got so much to do with um, uh, most um, developed countries, although there, there is um, some hunger um, uh, and uh, food insecurity. But let's look at the full title of the goal is to end hunger, achieve food security and improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture. So, so what might initially seem as something that's around um, human health, uh, a social um, aspects of sustainability, you can see there it actually involves all three. And typically each goal, each of the 17 goals involves all of the three dimensions of sustainability. And that's completely right, that's, that's the way it should be. Um, and the reason that there are 17 goals, which is a slightly uh, clumsy number, 
is because the, the goals will, were developed by a really big um, uh, consultation exercise with different sectors uh, internationally. And so that means that they are they're a kind of agreed, they're an agreed thing. They're, you know, that we know that across lots of sectors, they are the challenges that if we can, if we can overcome these, they are how we are going to put the world on a path to a, to a better future. And so just to um, summarize this section, excuse me, <coughs> to summarize this section, uh, we're talking about the 2030 agenda, transforming our world which was agreed at the United Nations in 2015 by all member countries. The goals came into effect in 2016 and they will run until 2030. Very importantly, they are an invitation to all sectors to collaborate, to put the world locally and globally on track for a sustainable future. And they're achieved through 17 sustainable development goals. And within those goals, there are a number of targets. There are targets more specific for each goal and those, those are what we're gonna, gonna talk about as well. So looking at this uh, second section, so how are the SDGs relevant to museums? And also how are the museums relevant to the SDGs? So I mentioned that the SDGs are about enhancing human and environmental rights and whether they recognize it or realize it or not, <clears throat> museums are very heavily implicated in human rights. Uh, so Article 26 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, that everyone has a right to an education, and uh, uh, Article 27, in that everyone has the right freely to participate in the cultural life of the community, to enjoy the arts and to share in a scientific advancement on its benefits. So I hope you can see that in these two articles, when I look at them, they have museums kind of written all over them. So museums support those two human rights. And by the same token, any attack on museums is an attack on human rights. So I would say that the SDGs need museums for, for seven reasons. Museums preserve cultural and natural heritage, which we saw relates to the, one of the articles in the previous slide. They reach lots and lots of people, but probably billions of people a year. They can support cultural participation. They are trusted by large numbers of people, and that's particularly important, I would say, at the, the present time when, when trust in a number of uh, uh, media, let's put it that way, um, is, is not so great. Um, they can make a significant contribution to local economies. And they also make a significant impact through their operations and use of resources. So if there are 55,000 museums in the world, they probably have a similar kind of impact to a small country. We can think about it that way. But museums can also participate in and initiate partnerships with other sectors. But we can look at the other side of that as well, is that museums need the SDGs too, the Sustainable Development Goals too. So many museums, museum workers, want to contribute to a more sustainable future, but they're often not quite sure how. Um, so the lack of a shared language or goal or understanding of sustainability can be a, ch a challenge, can be a problem. And that means that activity that does take place is often slightly scattergun. Um, it's not replicated or it's scaled up. Um, people reinvent the same, they, they go through the same problems and come up with often the same solutions. Uh, museums are often not particularly well connected with other sectors or with real world agendas. Um, and they often struggle to articulate their relevance. And I worked in museums for a long time, so I do feel I can, I can say these things um, with uh, some confidence. So, what, so why, what benefits might using the SDGs bring? Because what I'm talking about here is not just museums being a delivery mechanism for the SDGs, but saying that the SDGs can help museums play a really fantastic part in the world, one which will benefit them. 
Using the SDGs can help museums provide people with meaningful activities that link with the, the bigger picture. They can help them put their unique resources to good use, whether we think about collections or their buildings or their um, relationships with, with audiences. They can play, help them play a significant and distinctive part in a really super ambitious global agenda. Uh, very importantly, they can help museums to build partnerships and, co and productive collaborations, and they can help them create and demonstrate impact. And when I'm talking about using the SDGs in museums, it's not necessarily that a visitor walks into the museum and sees pictures of the SDGs all over the place because it's prob probably not relevant. What I'm talking about is factoring them into your thinking so that you deploy them effectively for, in a way that's going to help you. And so the importance of the, the SDGs for museums was recognized in, at the big um, ICOM um, conference in Kyoto in September when a resolution was adopted by the membership of ICOM and its committees um, on the importance of sustainability and also the role that museums can have in using the SDGs as their kind of blueprint to accelerate and enhance their contributions to creating a, a better future. And I was very happy to have been, been part of that process. So thirdly, how to build the, the SDGs into all areas of museum activity to help support their achievement. And so I put together this, this document in, in August to help museums get started with using the SDGs in museums, because I'm aware that 17 goals and um, 169 targets can seem a bit daunting. Um, and so what I did was I thought, well, what are the things that museums kind of already do? What are the kind of channels of activity that they can use to support the sustainable development goals? And how can we map those two things together? And so the guide talks about the background to the goals, as I've spoken about previously, and it presents a six step plan, which we'll also go through in this webinar. And then it talks through seven key, key activities. And if they're done in a particular way, then um, they will help support a third of all of the SDG targets, which, which is uh, pretty amazing. Um, and I have to say that um, what I'll present here is um, uh, general principles that apply to all museums. But you should also think about your own context, your own strengths, um, your own collections, for instance because those will help you build um, specific uh, relationships and activities that, are, that only your museum and only you can do. Uh, and the guide is free and you can get it from the, from the link which is there on the slide. So as I mentioned, there is this six step plan. And I would say firstly is to understand the SDGs to be an integrated program of 17 goals for the benefit of people, planet and prosperity in pursuit of and supported by peace and enabled by partnerships. Uh, the SDGs are about strengthening and enhancing human and environmental rights and achieving a sustainable future. They apply everywhere to every sector and that means they include you. Uh, secondly, is to consider what position or positions you should be taking in society and in helping achieve the SDGs. So do you, or do, does your institution or your role claim to be a leader, a follower, a supporter, an enabler to provide encouragement or to collaborate in partnership? Uh, and I think I'd recommend that you decide on or recognize your positions and commit to them. And it's to kind of step into the role that you feel you um, occupy or that you should occupy. And leadership doesn't mean just people at the top. Leadership comes um, at all levels um, in terms of how we lead ourselves and um, how we collaborate with others within our own sector and with, it, with other sectors. And basically it's about a commitment to doing what we believe to be the right thing. Um, I would say that the SDGs are not about business as usual, but they're a commitment to playing your part in making the future. And the SDGs are absolutely not about competition or um, 
someone or some institution um, demonstrating how great it is, but they are a hand on heart, honest commitment to the difference that you want to make to the world and the role that you're going to play in an ongoing way because sustainable development, as I mentioned at the, mo at the near the beginning of this webinar, sustainable development is ongoing focused activity that helps achieve a sustainable future. It's not a simple um, uh, one-stop shop, you know, a couple of steps or something. It's the journey that you are on and, and it's your contribution to, to shaping and developing that very desirable future. Uh, thirdly, I'd recommend that each museum or each, each person has a quick think about um, your, you and your museum or your network or your organization or your partnership or your individual role. Have a think about how you contribute to each goal currently, both positively and negatively, and identify which SDGs connect most with the subject area of your museum or your work. And really the importance of, of this step is acknowledging that we are all part of the world. We all make impacts positively and negatively. We're not neutral in any of this. And, um, and it's important just to have a think about, well, what difference do I make? And then, then that's your kind of um, starting point for, well, what difference do I want to make? And then step four is to understand the part that you can play. And this is, the, this is a longer part of the, of the webinar. Um, so as I mentioned, I came up with these seven key activities that are, I reckon relate to all museums or museum networks everywhere and um, the roles which are within museums. And so the first of these activities is, a, is, a, is to protect and safeguard the, world culture, the world's cultural and natural heritage, both within museums and more generally. And this relates to, a, a, and I should say that I've left the icons for all of the SDGs at the top of this slide, because um, cultural heritage um, will be affected by activity for each of these goals. But by the same token, cultural and natural heritage can help achieve all of those goals. So culture, cultural and natural heritage are hugely implicated throughout the SDG agenda. Um, and there is a particular uh, SDG target um, which sits within goal 11, sustainable cities and communities. Uh, and the title of the target is their goal, uh, target 11.4 is to strengthen efforts to protect and safeguard the world's cultural and natural heritage. So it's not to protect and safeguard it, it's to strengthen efforts. And this is what I mean about the SDGs are a commitment to doing, to doing something. They're about action. They're about a thoughtful, considered, directed, strategic action to achieve positive uh, outcomes. And so uh, the activity that I framed on the on the previous slide about protecting cultural and natural heritage both within museums and more generally is framed not just in terms of um, a body of material which there is in museums but is an acknowledgement that what there is in museums is a kind of dialogue between what there is and the wider world um, and for instance collections in museums form the basis of a wide range of activities, and they really need to be cared for, managed, made available, and developed in ways that sustain their purpose and function. And I would say that curators, conservators, and educators have a particularly strong role in supporting this key activity. So the second key activity is to support and provide learning opportunities in support of the SDGs. And so this relates to a number of specific um, SDG targets. Um, so, targ so in goal four is quality education, which has a target that by 2030, ensure all learners and acquire the knowledge and skills needed to promote sustainable development. Uh, goal 12, responsible consumption and production has a target that by 2030, ensure that people everywhere have the relative and in relevant information and awareness for sustainable development and lifestyles in harmony with nature. 
Uh, goal 13, urgent climate action, is, has a target to improve education, awareness raising and human and institutional capacity on climate change. Um, goal 16, peace, justice and strong institutions has, a tar has two targets that are relevant. 16.7 um, on ensure responsive, inclusive, participatory and representative decision making and 16.10 to ensure public access to information. And curators, exhibition makers and educators can support this key activity. And really the, the point of me showing you these targets is I hope that you can see that museums are very implicated in all of these. Um, it's to think about, well, how does our activity either support these presently and how could we enhance that? What opportunities do we have uh, and how can we work with others in uh, more effective partnerships that we either scale up or we enhance or we focus our activity so that we're aiming to make the best impact that we have. So this isn't necessarily about doing more, although it might sometimes be about doing more, but it will always be about doing better. And so the third key activity of these seven is to enable cultural participation for all. Just move on to the next slide. And so this relates to a, a, a very large number of um, uh, um, goals and targets. Um, so goal one, um, no poverty, as a target that um, 1.4, that by 2030, that ensure that all women, and men and women have equal rights. And it's about having access to um, cultural, to basic services. And as we've seen, because culture is uh, contained within an article in the uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights, culture is, access to culture is a basic service. And um, goal five, gender equal, uh, equality, has a target to uh, end all forms of discrimination against all women and girls everywhere. Um, goal 10, uh, reduced inequalities has a to, has a target 10 to um, that by 2030 empower and promote the social economic and political inclusion of all um, and a, a goal 11 sustainable cities and communities has a target that by 2030 to provide universal access to safe inclusive and accessible green and public spaces and I, I've included that because museums are, are public spaces and I would say that all staff can contribute to this key activity, ensuring the accessibility of services for all. Um, so that, because this is so important, it relates across all museum operations. So it relates to people in every role that there, are, that there is. Uh, so the fourth of these seven activities would be support to support sustainable tourism. And sustainable tourism has been defined as tourism that takes full account of its current and future economic, social and environmental impacts, addressing the needs of visitors, the industry, the environment and host communities. And it's also been referred to as uh, responsible tourism because that's, to be honest, slightly easier to understand. Um, and this relates to a particular target within Goal 8, Decent Work and Economic Growth that uh, target 8.9 is by 2030 to devise and implement policies to promote sustainable tourism that creates jobs and promotes local culture and products. Uh, and that would have a wide range of benefits across a number of other goals and targets. Um, and I'd suggest that marketing teams can support this key activity in particular, uh, as can financial and commercial teams by, for instance, um, selling sustainable and local products, you know, made by made by made by local people. Uh, the fifth of these seven activities is around enabling research in support of the sustainable development goals, and this relates to a couple of targets. Um, so, within uh, goal nine is about um, industry innovation and infrastructure. And museums and collections are a, they're a research infrastructure. Um, so that relates to targets 9.1 to develop quality, reliable, sustainable and re resilient infrastructure and 9.5 to enhance scientific research. Um, and museums are 
particularly heavily uh, implicated in the field of heritage science, which is ultimately science based around heritage uh, collections, um, which looks at how to preserve um, heritage and also to make it uh, available in, in sustainable ways. Um, and so that contributes very directly to this target 11.4, which I mentioned earlier, uh, to strengthen efforts to protect and safeguard the world's cultural and natural heritage. And I would say that staff who work with collections, such as curators and conservators, have a particularly important role in this key activity by developing collections, making them available and providing access to research useful collections. The sixth of these seven activities is to direct your internal uh, leadership, management and operations to support the SDGs. And this is, a, to be honest, a, a very large area and very, very important. So for instance, this is about ensuring that your day-to-day -day decision, decisions better support the SDGs in an ongoing way and that uh, managers and leaders ensure that staff are um, um, supported and empowered to better support the SDGs. Uh, museums um, employ people, they train people, um, and so we need to, they can help ensure that uh, workers' rights are protected, which contributes to a number of goals and targets, and they can ensure fair access to work. Um, in terms of their uh, use of their buildings, um, they can improve their energy use and increase, increase their proportion of re renewable energy. And that will contribute very directly to three of the, the goals around um, sustainable energy, um, industry, innovation and infrastructure and climate action. Uh, aiming to, uh, not just aiming to, but actually reducing waste of all kinds contributes again to a number of target goals and targets um, around water, responsible consumption and production, climate action and life uh, underwater because uh, uh, as we aim to reduce marine pollution. And also institutions that are accountable um, can be so by building the SDGs into their planning and reporting and that will support goal 16 which is about peace, justice and strong institutions. And then the last of these seven activities is that museums direct their external leadership, collaboration and partnerships towards the SDGs. And so um, museums can work to build partnerships that achieve what can't be achieved alone, both with other museums, but more importantly, with other uh, sectors to better support the SDGs. And this, support, this supports three um, targets very directly which are within um, the goal. Uh, goal 17 is partnerships for, for the SDGs. It has its own goal because partnerships are so crucial. So 17, 14, museums can enhance policy coherence for sustainable development. So that means ensuring that their policies within their organization, um, they also help mesh with policies in related sectors to produce results that can't be achieved alone. Um, 1716 is to enhance the global partnership for sustainable development, complemented by multi-stakeholder partnerships. And sorry, that's jumped a little bit on the slide. Um, and 1717 is to encourage and promote effective public, public, private, and civil society partnerships. And that you'll also um, help contribute to particular goals related to your to you, the subject area of your museum. Um, or your local uh, challenge development challenges and your relationships with your local communities and other sectors. And as I was doing this guide, I realized that um, if these seven key activities are kept in balance, supported and developed in harmony, that's also how a museum will be sustainable and how staff will be able to work collaboratively and productively uh, museums can sometimes seem like a kind of happy coincidence of um, uh, groups, teams, professions that kind of ex exist within the same same building, but have often very different priorities. Um, working collaborative, collaboratively around these seven activities, I do think is how museums will be able to uh, acknowledge that they have many different functions, um, and that's fine. Having different functions is fine. Um, and that actually there is a great strength in that diversity that 
and ensuring that they develop their activities kind of in harmony. Um, that, as I say, that's how a museum will be able to, to, to persist. Um, if a museum allows one or more um, of the activities to balloon at the expense of others, that will probably need to be addressed in the, in the future. And so to return to this six step plan, that um, step five is to develop an action plan to enhance your positive contributions to the SDGs and reduce your negative contributions. And I'd suggest you do that thinking about the seven activities that I mentioned before. And to span the gap really between, well, where are we now and where do we want to get to and identify the activities that are gonna help you bridge that gap. Um, incorporate that into your organization's development or your personal development uh, and into your monitoring and reporting cycle and communicate it both internally and externally. And I also I would say enjoy it because enjoyment is all, always good. Um, and the last of these six steps is to review and renew your action plan regularly. And I would suggest that you repeat this six step process. Enjoy it and celebrate it and don't wait uh, start now and if you haven't already started because the future needs you it needs all of us and so just to conclude um, a better future will not happen by accident we have to make it and we have to make it together museums have unique resources that really can bring a very important part to the part to that to the table to, to contribute to that um, better future um, the SDGs are a huge, huge opportunity for museums um, as a blueprint to enhancing their contributions to society and the environment and reducing their negative impacts. And now that you know what to do, please make a plan and do it. Don't wait. Please start. And I would say that the benefits are huge. Um, and whether you decide to start with a small step or a big step is fine. But it is actually absolutely about turning intention and interest into action. And so I put together a list of a few resources here. Um, there's the ICOM um, produced this resolution on sustainability, which is extremely good. Um, Jasper Visser um, gave a webinar um, last month for, for NEMO, which is very good. Uh, and what I would say is because the SDGs apply across all sectors, there is an absolute wealth of resources there to draw on. So museums don't need to reinvent the wheel. They can just, they can piggyback from these or they can benefit from them. Um, there's the main SDG website, the link is there. And there are very useful um, two pagers, um, like A4, two-sided uh, on each SDG that talk about why that SDG matters. Um, on the next website um, that I've got listed there, there are in-depth explorations of topics and partnerships. Uh, and UNESCO has also produced a really, really fantastic um, resource uh, for educators, which goes through each goal. So you, you pick a goal and it will give you a list of um, suggested activities and resources and so on. And that's the end of my presentation. So thank you. And we'll move now to the Q&A. OK, so while people are um, perhaps thinking of some questions, um, one of the most important things that we can do is to share our story, because museums have, are not always so, so great at sharing their story. Um, so I have a survey going at the moment, which is to, uh, to do two things. It helps inform um, a submission to the United Nations next year um, that relates to the next steps for ac activity on public education and awareness to do with climate change. Um, and so I have a survey that's asking museum people, um, including networks and, and uh, sector support organizations and researchers, um, how have you been uh, in thinking about or using climate change in your work uh, in the last uh, three years? 
and we'll put up the, the link to that uh, survey at the, at the end. It takes about 10, 10, 15 minutes. And as I say, it's to help empower people to understand how their work contributes to the Paris Agreement, because many people, their work will be contributing, but they just don't know. Um, and so there's a question here about how to measure and evaluate or prove imp impact that museums have on sustainable development. And I think that's really one of the great things with the sustainable development goals is that they help focus our attention on, well, what are the activities that we're aiming to have impact on? Um, and by using partnerships, again, we can demonstrate how, um, how a partnership has helped um, achieve activity for a particular sustainable development goal or a few sustainable development goals. Um, I mentioned that there are the 17 goals and 169 targets and backing those up are, are around 200 indicators. So a museum could, for instance, look at those indicators and think, well, I might use that indicator. I might be doing activity that helps um, contribute to that indicator. So you could use those as your me measure of, of change or success. I hope that, um, I hope that answers that. So there's a question here. Uh, can you give a concrete example of how, for example, goal to zero hunger can be supported by museum activities? So for instance, um, goal to zero hunger, like zero hunger is a huge, huge um, challenge for society. So what a museum could do would be to think of those seven key activities that I mentioned before and think about, well, of these seven activities, what can I do that could help address zero hunger? Um, so protecting, safeguarding um, cultural and natural heritage has a target in it which relates to zero hunger, which is around um, preserving um, varieties of food plants. And this is, this is all explored in more detail in the guide, the guide that I did. Um, or to take the second act of the seven activities, educate, you know, um, provide educational opportunities that address the SDGs. If you had collections that related to um, food or food security or indeed to hunger, that's how you could contribute to goal two. Um, you could contribute to goal two, zero hunger, um, good nutrition and sustainable agriculture through the food that you provide um, in your um, cafe, for, for example. Okay, um, so 16.7, ensuring response. So there's a question here, um, any examples on target 16.7, ensuring responsive, inclusive decision-making? Uh, and it says here, is it about public art or placemaking? How, how do museums include the public into curating, excuse me? <coughs> So what I would suggest with that is like 16.7, that target, you could think about that in it again in any of these seven activities. Um, and when we talk about governance in museums, it very often is taken to mean some what the activity of the senior board does. Museums can think about how they involve other people in their decision making, in, in all of their decisions, and that relates to 16.7. So, uh, so again, I would say that um, thinking about these seven key activities, and if there is a particular target or goal that you have in mind, I'd think about that target or goal in relation to those seven activities and think about, well, what, what, what might I be doing? And then reflect back on, well, what do I want to be doing? And to make sure that those are the same thing, because the difference between the two will be your sustainable development. I'm just waiting to see if there's another question. Okay, perhaps not. Uh, one more question. People are still typing.
So there's a question here about what's the difference between cultural museums and natural museums, for instance, geoparks. Are the uh, and are the two kinds of museum reaching the same SDG goals? Well, I would say I would say that they're probably not reaching. The, they'll be reaching some of the some of the same goals, but some of them will also be specific. <coughs> In the same way that um, the topic, the subject matter of each museum, will it, it's what it brings to the table for sustainable development. So so it's very very uh, individual. There's no one way to do it. Um, and the seven key activities and the six step guides I propose, they're just your kind of framework for thinking about, well, what else do I bring to this to this party? Um, and there's a question here about, do, I, do you think that museums need more training, knowledge or competence on these matters? Uh, I understand we can start on these matters by taking smaller, big steps, but how do you see this in the long run? Um, well, what I do think is that we need to move faster. Um, and really one of the great things with the aims of the sustainable development goals, they are around how we can help one and ourselves and one another move farther and faster together because um, activity for sustainable development is still scattered all over the place. And uh, really, having the SDGs as some kind of shared language that we debate and we play around with and we think, we think well, how do, what do I bring to this? What else do I bring? That is, that is I think, the best, um, that's the best thing that there is around at the moment. Um, but I think museums and museum um, uh, workers, I think it's not necessarily always that they need more training, knowledge or competence. I think the, I think we need to find ways to build their confidence. And I think confidence is built by experience, by sharing what we do, by um, opportunities such as this. Um, and and it's, ju it's just to, all we need to do in this is to bring ourselves to it. But that also involves having the confidence to realize that we have something to bring. And I can absolutely guarantee you that you do. Um, and so, we're going to close now um, and uh, the webinar will be um, put online and the slides will be shared as well um, and they can, and people are free to get in touch with me if you like and so i'd like to thank you for your time i hope that's been interesting and useful and thank you okay cheerio